in our normal skeptic camps, we ask uh, um, Arlen Grossman, who is a longtime member of Monterey County Skeptics, to do a quotation quote. And we're going to unmute you guys for this, I believe. And uh, he's going to proceed. He had a column in our local newspaper here in Monterey County. It was called the Herald newspaper. It still is around. His column was called, What's Your Quotation Quotient? He's a world traveler. And a few months before we learned of COVID-19, he and his wife moved to Spain for a bunch of months. They were there for many months. And then the last few months, they were locked in their apartment because <laughs> Spain was one of the places that was hit with uh, COVID first. And we thought, oh my God, what's going on? Then they came back to America and they stayed in Vermont for many, for many months. And they were on a private road, which is where um, Mike Pence had his uh, vacation in Vermont where um, road, yeah, he goes over there, Labor Day weekend, he goes to uh, to um, his, this area, and it was a road that he had to go by each time. Over in Vermont. Yeah, right, in Vermont. So, um, so one of the things that Arlen did, which is really makes me laugh, is that he had a, he had gone out and he ha didn't have anything in the house, you know, to write a poster board or anything, or a big Biden sign or anything. So what... <laughs> What he did is he went and took a, a what you're going to see, I'm going to share the screen real quick. Uh, Arlen doesn't know I'm doing this, but uh, he took this, um, <laughs> like a, what is that, a mail thing? Just a big mailing envelope, right. Mailing envelope and tie, and put it on the, put it on the, so that tr uh, Biden would have to pass by that each time when he came by. I think that was hilarious. And I, I just... <laughs> I just laugh when I look at that. And then he flipped it over and put on the other side Biden again. So that when, so when uh, he had to leave for the weekend, he'd have to run past that sign. <laughs> and it's so, I like that it is not um, professionally done. Like you've always had that sign out there. You put it up there like, I know you're driving by, so I'm going to make a sign to put it on here. I think that, I think that was, I think that was actually more touching. So I'm going to pull up his, his slides real quick, real quick. Like I had them here. So let's see where I put them. And uh, Arlen is going, how do you want to do this, Arlen? Do you want to? Um, you want well, to I, I was figuring uh, I will read the quote. I will give everybody three choices. And maybe uh, I'll give you a chance to shout out what you think the answer is. And then, then Susan will put up a sign that tells you the actual person who said the quotation. So I think that that should work. Okay. Well, let's let's um, hope that works well. Let me see. Okay. So oh, you guys probably right. can all see the screen. This is Arlen's quotation quiz. And it's spelled right. Wow. <laughs> Not always the case with me. Well, for me. All right. Oh, there's a polling feature on Zoom, but then we'd have to figure out how to use it, Avi. I don't know. All right, so here we go. We're going to start. I'm going to hit a button. Let's hope that makes the slide move to the right. Is this the first one, Arlen? Because I should yes. so. Okay, here we go. Tell people there's an invisible man in the sky who created the universe, and the vast majority will believe you. Tell them the paint is wet, and they have to touch it to be sure. Think about that for a moment and think about who might have said that. And your three choices are Albert Einstein, Richard Dawkins, or George Carlin. George Carlin. <laughs> what the rest do you think? George Carlin. George Carlin. Carlin. <laughs> I'll have to go with the majority on this one. <laughs> I well, already wrote that in the chat. Yeah, that's that's pure Carlin. <laughs> okay, it seems to be consensus on that one, Susan. Yep, it's Carlin. Excellent. Okay, here's, here's the next one. You guys are good. I know of no society in human history that ever suffered because its people became too desirous of evidence in support of their core beliefs. Let that sink in. And I'll give you three choices again. Um, Mahatma Gandhi. No. Sam no. Harris. <laughs> yes. Harrison Keeler. 
What do you guys think? Kilo. Sam Harris. Kilo. Hitch. Uh, oh, there's a the doorbell. Okay. Well, um, should we find out the answer? Yeah, then? Sam, Sam Harris. Yep. Oh, it's up there, right there. Okay. You guys are got them uh, both so far. Let's try the third one. I don't Randy. know any of those you want. All right, anyway, I don't believe in astrology. I'm a Sagittarius and we're skeptical. <laughs> That's so Randy. your three choices for that one are Arthur C. Clarke, Nostradamus, or Stephen Hawking. Wait, really? Hawk. Sounds like a random. I know, I've said it before. It's got to be. Don't give me answers. Shout out. Thank Hawking. Okay. Are we ready for the answers, Susan? Yeah. Here we go. This one you guys got wrong. Clark. Was to C. Clark who said that quote? Somebody got it. Somebody did good. All right. All right. We're ready for number four. In order to seek truth, it is necessary once in the course of our life to doubt as far as possible of all things. And you have three choices again. There's George Washington, Rene Descartes, or H.L. Mencken. 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 Yeah. You guys are, ah, mm, you guys are uh, losing your expertise. Be George Washington. <laughs> <laughs> I'm All doing right. worse at this than I do at science and fiction. But I get Susan. We haven't. Do we get the answer on there? Yeah. Oh, All right. right. I'm not paying attention. Okay. Uh, this one is the fear of God is not the beginning of wisdom. The fear of God is the death of wisdom. Skepticism and doubt lead to study and investigation. And investigation is the beginning of wisdom. I said that. <laughs> <laughs> well, so did somebody else. Uh, one of them is a uh, possibility is Will Rogers. And the second possibility is Clarence Darrow. And the third possibility is T.S. Eliot. Darrow. Darrow. Well, you guys are good on that one. Show it, Susan. Oh, wow. Correct. Okay, let's go on to the next one. S skepticism, like chastity, <laughs> not be relinquished too readily. <laughs> huh. And your three choices on that one are Dr. Laura Schlesinger, uh, George Santa Santayana, I don't know how to pronounce them, and or Carl Jung. Oh, I think it's the uh, second one. Yeah. yeah. Santayana. It's probably someone who didn't get laid all too often. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, I don't want to know about that. I don't too much information there, Klaus. All right, let's go with the answer. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah right. Yeah. I think I used that one in one of my uh, in one of my uh, skeppities, actually. Right. That sounds familiar. Here we go. The strongest continuous thread in America's political tradition is skepticism about government. And your choices are Abraham Lincoln, George Will, or George Soros. Oh, I'm, George Will. Yeah, that's right. So what do you guys think? George Will. George Will. Yeah, George Will. All right, good guesses. Yeah. That was Will. indeed yes. George Will. All right, so you didn't get a couple of them earlier on, but now you're getting them. Okay, the, the good thing about science is that it's true whether or not you believe in it. So you know the graph Tyson. Tyson. Yeah. <laughs> Your choices are Neil deGrasse Tyson, Susan Gerbic, or Neil Armstrong. Donald Trump. <laughs> Sorry, it's the only one I knew, so I had to yell it. <laughs> and Tyson stole that from lots of people before him. Yeah. Neil deGrasse Tyson. Yes. Ew. Okay. No, the next one. 
for me, it is far better to grasp the universe as it really is. Carl Sagan. <laughs> and to persist in delusion, how satisfying and reassuring. Well, we've got some smart skeptics here. I send that out about once a week to somebody. <laughs> okay. Um, so the answer is indeed Carl Sagan. All right. Very good. The science, my lad, is made up of mistakes, but they are mistakes which it is useful to make because they lead little by little to the truth. Your three choices on that Medicine. are Jules Ver. No, I'm sorry. Anthony Fauci, L. Ron Hubbard, or Jules Verne. <laughs> Who was the last one? Jules, Jules Verne. Vern. Fauci, Hubbard, or Verne? I'm going to say Verne just because the my lad sounds angry. Yes. Yeah, Verne. I agree. Ah, okay. Yeah. Jules Verne. Okay, right. Yeah, not Jules. You guys are good. Let's see the answer. Mm. Yep, Jules mm. Verne. <coughs> there, are, <clears throat> there are three stages in scientific discovery. First, people deny that it is true, then they deny that it is important. Finally, they credit the wrong person. <laughs> so your choices are I heard that one. Isaac Newton, Tiger Woods, or Bill Bryson. 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 <laughs> that was kind of easy, huh? I think it's, it's kind of Tiger Woods. <laughs> no, it was indeed Bill Bryson. <laughs> All right. The fact that an opinion has been widely held is no evidence, whatever, that it is not utterly absurd. Indeed, in view of the silliness of the majority of mankind, a widespread belief is more likely to be foolish than sensible. So your choices will be Booker T. Washington, Bertrand Russell, or Dwight Eisenhower. Russell. 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 Yeah. Russell. Oh, you guys are getting them all right. Wow, Where's that one's the opposite of the fallacy of uh, argument from popularity. At popular. right. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, new opinions are always suspected and usually opposed without any other reason but because they are not already common. Your choices are William Randolph Hearst, John Locke, or Donald Trump? It can't be Donald Trump because uh, that's actually quite Kogan. <laughs> there's more <laughs> some syllables, or there's multiple syllables yes. in some of those words. John Locke. Too many syllables. <laughs> John uh, Locke. You know, funny thing Locke. is, that is actually something that Trump said. Uh, nobody <laughs> believes it, but. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> no, it's, 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 the answer. Oh, it is oh. Bill's <laughs> mind. I, 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 I <laughs> okay. There are children playing in the street who could solve some of, some of my top problems in physics because they have modes of sensory perception that I lost long ago. Feynman. Okay, your choices are Marie Curie, Leonardo da Vinci. Or Robert Oppenheimer. Hmm. Certainly wasn't Da Vinci because I don't think physics had that right. name. I said it in English also. Oppenheimer. Yeah, Oppenheimer. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good guess. It is Robert Oppenheimer. Okay. Good. When I ex oh, sorry. when I examined myself and my methods of thought, I came to the conclusion that the gift of fantasy has meant more to me than my talent for absorbing positive knowledge. Donald Trump. Your choices are <laughs> Walt Disney, George Lucas, or Albert Einstein? Albert Einstein. Somebody, somebody said Einstein. It's mm -hmm. Disney. Well, Susan Scholl. Lucas. And there's the bell. Oh. Yeah, you guys have heard of Einstein. Okay. 
the next one, um, the radical invents the views when he has worn them out, the conservative adopts them. And your choices are Thank George you. Bernard Shaw, Sean Hannity, or Mark Twain. Twain. Mark Twain. Twain. Samuel Clemens. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> no, not Samuel Clemens. Hannity, yeah, for sure. And the answer actually is Samuel Clemens or Mark Twain. Pick your pick. It is a capital mistake to theorize before one has data. Insensibly, one begins to <coughs> twist Look facts on. to suit theories instead of theories to suit facts. Sure, hey. hmm. Kennedy, of course. Sherlock Holmes. I think many people anyway, have said that. Yeah. Your choices are Sherlock Holmes, or if you prefer Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, Bob Hope, or <coughs> Goodall. Sherlock Holmes. Sure I saw that in the ben uh, Benjamin Cumberbatch Sherlock series. Mm. Yeah, we got some Sherlock Holmes fans here, and they are correct. Okay, uh, the next one. The most exciting phrase to hear in science, the one that heralds new discoveries, is not Eureka, I found it, but that's funny. Isaac Asimov. Oh, gosh, you guys are sharp. <laughs> uh, are Francis Bacon, Jerry Seinfeld, or Isaac Asimov. And it was indeed Asimov. Okay. Wow. I can't fool any of you guys. The only means of strengthening one's intellect is to make up one's mind about nothing, to let the mind be a thoroughfare for all thoughts. And you get the choice between Edgar Allan Poe, um, John Keats, or Michael Pence. Edgar Allan Poe, John Keats, or Mike Pence. Poe? <sighs> Keats. Don't hear your answers. Both Keats. 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 Pence. Not Pence. Not Pence. <laughs> Not Pence. Really? You never know. Um, okay, it is John Keats. Okay, good. And now the final quotation. Without deviation from the norm, progress is not possible. You have three choices. Frank Zappa, Joe Biden, or Joan Rivers. Zappa. Frank Zappa. 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 Got some oh. Zappa fans out there and that is correct. Uh, so you guys did very well. You got most most all of them right. And I'm impressed. This year's quotation quiz. I missed last year because I'm traveling abroad, but I've done it every other year, and it's been my pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> that was great. Let me get rid of this off the screen over here. Thank Fantastic. You, Thank you so much, Arlen. That was really fun i we missed you a lot having you uh in spain all that time and then messing yeah, really around with tents over there in vermont I, i'm sorry i couldn't make it last year but it would have been a long commute yeah well you know what we can't see you anyway <laughs> arlen's been to my house many many times he lives uh not too far away from me yeah